So I'm Ning Chao, and uh, I'm co-founder and CEO of this company. So the company name is Aircortex. And we are focusing on pneumorphic uh, engineering, trying to bring pneumorphic technology to daily life. How do you explain what neuromorphic technology is? Yeah, so uh, be honest, for me, once we talk with people, what is neuromorphic? Uh, also, you know, right, we are talking with a lot of investors in China and also in Europe and the US. We, Currently, we don't see neuromorphic even. We just see is edge computing. It's uh, one technology we can use on the edge for ultra low power for real time sensory processing. Yeah, this is uh, what it can do. <laughs> yeah, because once we talk about this, is the brain is spared. Uh, the feeling to bring to people is more like this is uh, unreal, or this is too new, or not that uh, real to be a technology to be ready for daily life. Yeah. So we don't want to make people nervous so that we don't see pneumorphic that much recent days. Yeah. How is edge computing different from cloud computing? Yes, uh, so uh, especially the new AI companies, they're more focusing on the AI chips for cloud computing. Right? So they collect the data with the 5G or some other solution. And then on the cloud, there's a big computer or big server they can run on real time to help you to solve the real problem. Yeah, but uh, actually the daily life, maybe I, people believe that won't be pure cloud because uh, if you look at the human, right, we are only edge committing, right? We never send our data to cloud, right? But uh, people, they're working profit, right? So they can imagine for, for, for cars, for drones, for robots, all this thing, uh, so first of all, for cars and the drones, they need a real time. So the real time means the short latency for, for the sensory processing. If you send it to cloud, you, you need to wake up the, the data, you wake up the, the 5G trans transferring, right, to send the data to cloud. And then on the cloud, you need to process it. And then maybe the loop will be going to be something like 100 milliseconds longer. So there won't be enough, short enough for some special applications, for example, if the drone is flying, try to do some object avoiding, right? Or for, for the car, once the car is driving, and uh, you want to do some emerging brake system, or try to tune your, your wheel once, once, uh, once something happening in front of the car, just in a short period, something like five to 10 millisecond distance. So that's very strict, and uh, that's only can be sold on the edge. Another thing is, uh, of course, once you send it to cloud, also it's not reliable, right? Because if the, the car is moving to some place that's no internet, they're going to crash if, if something they cannot do on real time. Yeah, another is some, for something for robots, right? You can imagine, uh, currently, of course, the robots on, on the desk, you know, on our daily life is not a real robot. It's just something, um, I mean, most of the robots, as I'm not talking about some fancy technology in US. Most of the robots, I mean, in our daily life, in hotel, especially hotels and the government in China or some airport in China, it's more like a, a moving stuff with a screen, right? Yeah, it's not a real robot. But it, what it, I'm thinking, seeing is some more like a human robot, you know, with uh, hundreds, even thousands, thousands sensors on, on the body. Um, they all want to, the, the, they want to do some sensory processing in real time. All this big data, actually, you cannot easily Send, send all this vision, auditory, touching, all this sensor, sensory information to cloud to do real-time processing. It's better, actually, we do pre-processing on the edge. So that's a huge market, actually. So there are already some uh, uh, robots company trying to reach us, trying to, to see whether it's possible to use technology to move to the robots to see, to do some real-time real uh, vision processing, also the, the, the touch, also the auditory processing with ultra-low power, especially ultra-low power, right? So if, especially once you com compare with the current solution, you move everything to cloud, um, it's going to burn lots, burn lots of power. But our technology mainly is burning, uh, we call it sub-millivolt, right? So it means with a common battery, you can drive it for, 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 for months and even yearly. So that's something really a big improvement, right? So 
I think I, I think I still remember. So that was the one robust company, big one in China. They were doing some like a vision processing to use the robots to read something for the for, or to recognize something. You know, if, if people come in, they say, "Hey, uh, dad, mom," something like this. It's easy task, but for them, actually, in order to do this, it's kind of impossible. They have to plug in the power. All these robots has to stay on the power station. Because for this kind of vision, they are running on the normal camera, and it's, uh, it's burning uh, walls, actually. So they can not easily with a, a, a mobile um, battery to drive it. So this, uh, so for us, it's kind of easy, actually. So we can easily make a small thing on, on, the, on the device and give it a move, even a cup, right? Even anything, actually, in the future. I can imagine we can move this stuff to all the devices in the room to make everything to be able to interact with the human. Yeah, so I think this is something, a big uh, step, a big jump, actually. OK. And what are applications for neuromorphic chips? Yeah, so uh, this is really perfect for real-time sensory processing, something like uh, for natural signal processing, like uh, speech command detection, and uh, some ultra-low power uh, let's say for the, the monitor you can put on the machine to real-time monitoring whether the machine is working perfectly or not uh, with ultra-low power or something like a body signal monitoring. So we can uh, wear this one, this stuff, to real-time uh, monitoring this uh, heart rate or heart uh, signal to see whether the people is, is, is healthy or not. For this kind of monitoring, it's normally the current existing technology uh, normally, they cannot make it uh, with a battery to drive it for, for weeks or for a longer time. But it's very possible for this kind of technology to, to be wearable for, let's say, one month or even longer time. So this is something special. So uh, we are seeing this is a perfect technology uh, uh, to follow the, the traditional deep learning uh, for the, we call the third generation uh, third generation uh, AI technology, so that we can use this for on the edge for for this kind of small signal processing for a long time. And uh, another thing, another direction actually is for auditory uh, for uh, vision processing. We call it uh, dynamic vision processing. Yeah, this is also special because uh, it's not like the normal vision based on frame, based on our, our current existing camera. You know, frame by frame. Our current uh, web camera maybe we, we have the number like uh, 30 frames per second, but. Uh, this kind of vision system, what we, we are developing now, so later probably we can see some demo on the, on the desk with our existing system. Uh, so the eye inside is not like the normal camera. It's more like the real eye. It's not based on frame, but based on the pixel events. Yeah. So also the processor inside of the system is not like uh, the normal deep learning for frame-based uh, processing, but more like uh, pixel-level processing. So by doing that, so we can do the vision processing with ultra-low power. So something like in, in the room, we, if we want to do some gesture recognition or body uh, gesture or human presence detection, we can really use uh, that, uh, one, uh, the, the coin battery to drive it for months. That is impossible for current technology, but it's possible for this kind of technology. Yeah. What was your journey into founding your own startup and the beginnings of the company? I'd like to start the, the story start from when I, I joined this institute. So I did my PhD in China, Chinese Academy of Sciences. And after that, I was uh, watching to try to look for a new position actually in Europe. Because I was in China, it's very crowded, and more like a, a place to be more calm down, to, to have time to read and to learn more. And that time, pneumophic was very new also in Europe, actually. So it's just a start. And some groups are doing uh, big uh, hardware or big chips for mimicking the brain. So that's the. That's and when was that? That was uh, 2012. Yeah. So, and then I, I met uh, Giacomo in Capcaccia, his workshop. In uh, this is uh, one of this famous pneumophic uh, uh, workshop. One of that actually, another one is in Telluride. So I was I met him there and I was asking Jacob whether there was a position, and uh, fortunately he said yes. And he left some question to me actually to answer. So, and I, I think I was lucky. So I got the position and then George joined Jacob's group because uh, for me pneumophic is very new, but it's very interesting. 
and uh, I see the, 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 I saw the potential actually for that at that time, for the future. And, uh, but before that, actually, I was doing uh, the normal traditional hardware, like a SRAM, IPGA thing. And I was a traditional uh, mixing of circuit designer. So for me, it's also very new. Actually, it's difficult for me also. So starting from the first year, I joined INI, the, this institute. The institute is uh, the first uh, joint institute between University Zurich and the Teachers Zurich. It's the first one, actually. It started from 1995. And Jacob also was a very, uh, that time, he, he joined the second year. 1996, he joined the institute with his colleagues. And now currently he's the director of the institute. So <laughs> he's also on the good position, right? So, um, but anyway, for me, it's, it's very new and it's difficult. And uh, I was trying to understand what that, and, but uh, you know, it's very difficult. So even during the uh, lab meetings, the group meetings, all the meeting together with some other colleagues in the institute, it's very challenging for me. So I don't understand what they are seeing. One thing is because my English is not that, that level. And I don't know, also, I'm not professional in neomorphic at that time. So uh, especially once we're sitting with some other scientists, they are talking about uh, neural science and the neural network, and neural models, different things. <laughs> so for me, it's really challenging. And, uh, but fortunately, I was focusing on hardware development. So I did several chips. So start from 2012, I, I was uh, working on the ROSE chip. So it's something like, uh, it's also, I think at that time, it's also very advanced hardware. Uh, INI started doing that. It's a Europe project, EU project. And uh, fortunately, we did it and it worked. And then we, we started doing some other chip to, to make a bigger scale. You know, that time, the, the first chip was just a single one. It cannot scale up. And, but you, we know our brain is more like um, a bigger size. Also, for each block, maybe the architecture is kind of similar, right? So it's uh, very natural for people to think, you know, the problem maybe if we can make small chips, but it's, if it's easier to make a scale up, right, bigger system, it's going to be interesting. So that time, the, in 2014, we focused on this multi-chip solution to make multi-cars and multi-chips and uh, to, on the chip level, on the system level, try to integrate it. Yeah, so that uh, we did another chip we called uh, uh, Dynamic SE. Yeah, so we made it actually on the desk. You can still see that, especially in INI, there are a lot of students that are using that for experiments. Exper experiments. Yeah. So uh, that was a successful project. And then uh, started from 2016, we did another one, uh, trying to merge the two chip, existing two chip together. And that's what, that was another big project we call new RAM3. Uh, with uh, ST microelectronics. So that one is uh, trying to merge two, two chips together and uh, still make it scalable, but with advanced technology. It's a 22 nanometer process and it uh, makes a signal. So it's kind of very advanced, uh, makes signal circuit inside with ultra low power and uh, scalable to mimic, mimic, mimic the brain, right? So it's uh, fantastic. But uh, uh, in 2017, once we got the chip back, actually, AI was also hot at the time. So people, all people that are talking about AI, especially for us, actually, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's, it's something strange, actually, because uh, people, they question you. So the, the AI they're talking about is about deep learning, right? It's not neomorphic. And the neomorphic you are seeing, the neomorphic is more mimic experience, right? It's from the brain study. You are trying to... Uh, make the chip work like the brain, then what is, the, what is the, the function, right? So where is the application for that? So actually, at that time, we don't have any application, no application using the technology. It's just something on the desk, and uh, it's just something, you know, it's general purpose. We're trying to help the scientists actually to understand how the brain works. So they guess uh, there might be some network in running in the in, in your brain, right? You you try to mimic it in the hardware, try to see whether the network works or not. But it's not serving the problem. It's not trying to do gesture, or do some body, or do the speech command, do nothing basically. So all the existing AI companies are all doing machine learning, doing deep learning thing. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, why actually we think about the start company. We want to bring this one to real life and try to start to think about the problem, start from another direction. So 
So before that, we all doing more like a maybe the brain started to reverse engineering the brain, right? So now it's uh, another direction. Try to start from the project uh, pro uh, program, uh, sorry, the, the problem first, and uh, try to understand what people need, and then we maybe it's a gesture recognition or maybe it's a speech command or body uh, signal monitoring, and then we try to use the technology to fix the problem. Yeah, that's another direction. So that's also make us more advanced compared with, with some other startups in this direction. So in two, two, March of 2017, we started the company with uh, Giacomo Indori and uh, tried to, uh, together with INI. So INI is still working on the basic research, but the company is more for applications, for industrial applications. Yeah. So it's a whole story. Mm -hmm. And why did you start in Switzerland? Yes, so I, ha I have to say Switzerland is really a perfect uh, place to start the, uh, the new technology. You know, there, uh, there are three top level universities here, right? So there all, every day there are lots of new ideas coming out. So, uh, so first of all, it's really a nice place. And uh, for sure, you, you, always, you always see actually lots of uh, new technology that are coming out from these inst universities or institutes. And uh, for us, it's the same, right? So uh, especially at the very beginning, there are lots of people interested in investing in this kind of new technology. Uh, yeah, so also the, the human resources is very rich, right? So once you start a company, you want to get a perfect talent uh, uh, engineers to join to start the technology is very easy because uh, uh, lots uh, the new PhD students they finish the, pro, uh, the position in, in university they they willing to join to start the new technology right also uh, some other people working outside uh, Switzerland in Europe they willing to join Switzerland because here is more stable and more richer you know for the higher salary and uh, and a better environment for research so they're willing to join this uh, this thing so i would say for startup it's perfect okay and what is not so perfect yeah so <laughs> this is a very direct question actually so uh once the company want to grow to a bigger size you know for us we're trying to get rid out of this label startup the label so so we that's going to be difficult, uh, especially once you look at the, the history, right? Uh, not just recently. So if you look at the, try to look for some 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 big companies, uh, some new big companies who is using the new technology, something like AI companies, or uh, actually it's difficult because there's no first of all there's no environment, uh, investment environment. So the ticket size for investment is very little. So normally people are talking about here is something like uh, 150k or 1 million less than 1 million. So once you want to have more than 1 million investment, it's very difficult. Right? For most of these startups, it's difficult. Another is for market. Right? So there's uh, no uh, big market because the size, the people size is too, too little. And uh, also the new technology, once you want to, to merge, uh, the, the merge technology, once you want to, to bring it to the market, uh, the very few uh, big company can use it. Some big company like uh, LG company, like uh, we, what we know from uh, uh, Switzerland is more like the old one, already started several, uh, let's say, 10, 10 years, even longer years ago, right? So they're already big and stable. They're not that willing actually to use new technology, like something like, uh, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know what, <laughs> but I'm, I'm talking about comparing with some other new tech company, right? It's not eager actually to use the, the new technology from startup because the startup normally, they cannot supply very stable and reliable solution for them. Of course, I can understand, right? So uh, it's, they have to select the, the best solution, which is cheap and which is uh, stable and with high yield, right? So for them, to, easier to control. But for startup, startup is difficult because startup is more like, uh, you know, if this year can take some number from us, it's better, right? If we can have some market. But unfortunately, uh, it's, it's not that situation. So. Yeah, so market and investment environment is not that good. How did you learn to be an entrepreneur? Yeah, so for me, I'm a pure engineer. So I, I still a kind of engineer. I was trying to switch myself, right? Start from, especially start from last year. Um, I was trying to, to learn and get trained to, to understand how 
the company works and uh, how uh, the investment works, right? How how we get uh, the uh, fundraising and uh, how we manage the team, all these things, and how to how to do the marketing, and especially how to bring technology to a product. This is very difficult. To be honest, I already, you know, I feel lots of pressure already. So it's not something like you just tape out a chip in the, the, the in the lab, right? You test it and the publish paper. That's easy actually, but if you want to bring the technology to make a million of this chip and still make it stable and make it work, you know, in each chip and make a high yield, and uh, and guarantee this works for the, your customer, and the customer can easily take it and to, to their product, that's a big challenge actually. So uh, I was trying to learn, but still, you know, for myself, um, the very beginning, of course, I don't know that. So I, I. The, the very beginning, the investment, I just some, you know, for, for them, Baidu. But the venture came to us saying, hey, we want to invest in you. I was happy. I never, before that, I, I didn't talk with any other, some other investors. And after this round, I didn't talk with some other investor within my year. <laughs> so basically, I was just happy to take the money and without talk, talking about the, 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 the value of the company that much. But the number, of course, is something like uh, 1.5 million. US dollar is kind of good to start. So everyone was happy at that time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, I think we're kind of lucky because, uh, anyway, by the winter, it's a good, good investor for us, right? They're big and uh, um, they have uh, a nice view for how to bring the technology to, to, to the market. They're helping us a lot for that. Yeah. And how was your experience dealing with investors? Once we uh, do the investment, and uh, I, I just I told you we just take the money. But after several months, we feel like uh, no, this is something we have to be careful because uh, the, once we have bigger have a bigger team, something like more than ten people. Of course, it's not big compared with the big companies, but for us, we we can easily calculate the run uh, the burn rate. Right? We can easily see the money <laughs> in our account is going down very quickly. Right? So this is. Uh, something we have to be careful so first of all we cannot just as we imagine we grow team as as fast as possible also the investment we have to be careful we have to uh, see when we should take a new money in and uh, how 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 fast we, sh we we will be able to bring the thing to market to get profit and to make the company work right otherwise the company cannot always take investment and we will die in the future if we don't have any products so that's something uh, we need to be careful right so that's nervous me a little bit at that time and what really nervous me actually once we started the, this round of investment you know we are, are we have been running this actually already for almost one year to be honest so so last year this time i was uh, starting to talk with uh, some investor in China already. So some people came to us, you know, saying um, they might be interested in technology, they want to know something about this. And we were doing some pitch, some showing some slides to them. And that time actually we realized, you no, know, it's, it's something uh, not as w what we were thinking about. Because the people, investors, especially investors, they're more interested in is uh, what you can create to the market. It's not something in the lab is something like what they can sell as a product, right? And the when and how much they can earn by invest money in, right? So this is a really direct and uh, serious question, right? So, and uh, that time I feel like uh, it's, uh, it's distance between us and, and, the, the, and the, the, the investor, actually. So we're trying to tune the slides and uh, trying to really make a plan so a more clear plan, so to, to try to explain them, this is not a research plan, it's a business plan. But, <laughs> but to be honest, uh, uh, still the, the very beginning, the, between the, so the, in the, 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 first, uh, uh, the, the, the first half year, basically, this is still a pure research plan. There's no business because we don't know business. We don't know where to, which customer is going to be our customer and who is going to take technology and how much we're going to earn by, by selling this. Right? this. But this is a question from investor. And normally investors will tell us, hey, it's cool technology, but we won't invest because we don't know when you're going to make money. Yeah. So this is, uh, yeah, so force us to learn and try to, to convert uh, 
ourselves to be more, especially myself, to be more, more like a real CEO, not a CTO, but a CEO. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did you learn to be the CEO of your startup? Yeah, so uh, most from investors and customers. So to be honest, uh, during the last year, we have been talking with around 100 investors, most of them in China and some of them in the US uh, and some of them in Europe. Yeah, so this is uh, easily to understand, to be understand, right? Because uh, uh, in, in China, the investors are more active and they're more willing to invest in new technology. So they're more from China, but still, they're also real, right? They, they don't want to put the money to some technology. You see, maybe in, in five years and 10 years, that won't work for them. So they're more willing to do investment for some technology. It's better to be one year, but if you see one to three years, maybe, 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 right? But <laughs> still, it's a challenge for them. Yeah, so most of the knowledge actually is by talking with all these hundreds of investors, we try to get the knowledge, you know, what we should do and uh, where we, we, should, we should go for the company. This is the direct um, uh, the learning from the investors, actually, investors are trying to teach us how to do that. And uh, part of them actually the from our, of course, I was trying to, to learn from, some, read some book, you know, try to take some courses also, try to, uh, on the web, you know, on the on, on, on internet to, to try to learn. So basically try to get some basic knowledge what we should do for the, for the, for the company. Yeah, some actually, so from the, the daily management of the team, so I feel like I need to learn, I need to tell myself, also need, you know, I need to, teach my, my, tell my, my team where we should go and why we should do that and which direction. So why we, we make this decision. So what's the, what's the reason for that? Try, try to explain them because it, I'm pure researcher. Also, they are pure researchers actually. It's so difficult for the company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think your education prepared you for running a startup or are there knowledge gaps? Uh, the, uh, yeah, that's a huge gap. There's no, I have, I, I never, before we register a company, I never think about it to restart a company, actually. <laughs> yeah, just something like, you know, uh, in 2017, early 2017, we were thinking to bring this to, to, to market. But, but what, we, we should, what we will bring to the market, we don't know, actually. <laughs> yeah, even the first uh, city run investor, they came to us, hey, I feel this technology is cool. We want to invest this one for, for body signal monitoring. You see, yes, uh, this might be, yeah, this might be the direction. So we should go for that. Then we, we, we take the money and then we do some research on that and see whether it's possible or not to, to do this body signal monitoring. That was that time. But still, you know, this project is still going on. <laughs> I mean, start from, this, that's two years ago, right? So uh, it's really, the company now is really driven by the market. It's not, uh, we have to do, we have to see, okay, so for the first year, uh, for vision is the the first task, and uh, for body signal and uh, for speech is more for two three years market. It's not not for for now. So we have now we have much clear understanding of what is the market and what is the plan for us also. Yeah. So it's it's very difficult. There's no no background for my side, no preparing for my side. Be be honest. Yeah. So it's very challenging. What kind of advice would you have for someone who wants to found their own startup? Yes, so I think first of all, you really, we really should start from the real problem. Yeah, not just the interest, not just, the, you know, for researcher, we always think that our, our solution is the best, right? Because we publish a paper, we write the numbers, the specs, you know, in this paper, we always mention this is the best solution, right? In, 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 in the existing solutions. But actually we never really open our eye to look into existing solutions in the market. What is there existing already, right? So the, I think that basically there are two cases. One is not existing yet, so something pure new, so you have a big chance, right? You can, this is no one doing that before and then no solution before, so you have a pure, uh, perfect solution you can easily bring to market within one year or several years, and you can see um, there's huge potential, you can do that easily. So that's, I really see, yes, please do that. That's really, you're creating 
lost value for the for the for the future for people for human right so that's a good thing for us and uh, for something actually is already existing some solution so that's uh, something you need to be careful because uh, um, it's so if your solution is not something like 100 or 10 times or 100 times better than existing solution i mean the the cost and the power consumption maybe if you use chip right and uh, if it's uh, the performance is not 100 times or at least 10 times better it's going to be difficult because uh, you because you want to make this better uh, to be ready to the market you need some time right in during this time window maybe some other solution already is existing and also for existing solutions you want to get it out right plug in yourself stuff is very challenging yeah you have to convince people to do that that's going to take energy yeah that's if you don't have enough um, uh, a good enough thing to, to show to, to the customer, they won't do that easily. So that's uh, something. Yeah. So I would say start from the market to, to guide yourself, to, to try to really judge your technology whether it's, it's worth to do that or not. If you could go back in time, you know, a few years, what would you do differently? Uh, I think we were, we were lucky. We were lucky, really, we are lucky actually till now, right? So we, everything is going smooth. Especially, uh, first of all, we have a really fantastic team, and uh, everyone is really uh, take this as a platform they can realize uh, their dream. You know, everyone come here for Neomorphic, trying to bring Neomorphic to 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 real uh, daily life. Right? So it's not uh, research. This is uh, their uh, dream actually. So this is a good thing for us. And another is that we we get the investment. You know, all these invest investors. They have similar uh, understanding of technology with us, and they're trying to also bring this uh, to to the real market, and trying to also use their resource to help us to push it to the market. Yes, I think we are kind of lucky. So I cannot say what we <laughs> we should do uh, if we go back. Uh, it's uh, more like you know, uh, yeah. So if we really go back, then I will say I should. Uh, before we started coming, maybe I take some some training, you know, and uh, all before we do this round investment, I should uh, start to look into the, the market more and uh, try to understand what they want. And then probably this round uh, investment maybe is easier, right? So otherwise, now you see it's already half a year. Uh, it's already one year, actually, so it's still not closed yet. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very difficult. Yeah. And how do you deal with these stressful situations? Yeah, so to be honest, I have a really a big heart. <laughs> I never feel nervous a little bit sometimes. For example, this interview may some, the very beginning make me a bit nervous, but uh, uh, be honest, uh, it's difficult to make me nervous. The reason is because uh, you know once we. I got trained actually for this thing because once we we did the chip did design you know for AI for, for this hardware, what we developed it in in, in the institute, um, they always something like a, we call it deadline, yeah. That was the day you have to send out your design, and after that is is not possible to 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 tape out for the chip development, so you have to finish the thing, that time right. This is. Uh, uh, special for actually design. So you know, always I just I told you, normally I for me I spend uh, at least a half a year focusing on this kind of chip development in each year, right? So um, especially once close the deadline, you have to make sure the chip works and uh, you run all the simulations and you trust yourself and <laughs> the the chip you 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 make sure. Otherwise, you you can imagine if you tip out it, and after three months you get back the chip. If something, if any transistor inside doesn't work, it means you you failed, right? So you 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 spend half a year, and uh, everyone is looking for that, and uh, you have to say, I'm sorry, so it doesn't work. <laughs> you, we waste the, uh, we all waste half a year. So this is something. Also, you know, the tape out is not cheap, right? So um, this is one uh, thing to judge whether the designer is valuable or not is like how much money they spend during their life for taping out of the chip. You know, how many tape outs they have, or how much money they spend already. I mean, it's, it's very normal, I think, for some designer, they spend uh, more than several millions, even 10 million US dollars to, to, 
to just run to, to tape out the chips. Yeah, so this is uh, always spending big money and have to guarantee it works that time and have to tape out, especially sometimes, you know, if you cannot finish it, they have to run more than 20 hours per day, maybe just without sleep, even try to make it work and then tape out on time. So I will not be nervous for that. Yeah, another thing is I also get help from the team. You know, they, they all trying to, to uh, work perfectly, 100% for the company. So that also calm me down. So I trust uh, there must be a solution, right? So there won't be <laughs> something bad. So as soon as we, we all work hard, 100% or even 120% uh, hard, so, so we will get a good result. So that always like that. At least for me, so that also is something I think is my role in my life. So as far as I work, uh, hundred percent focus on something that must be a good result. Yeah. So, where do you see yourself in maybe five to ten years? Uh, we're really, really willing to push it, really to make it uh, a bigger success in the future. So we always, uh, you know, or uh, you see the joke or uh, is our dream is uh, really to create a company more like uh, Intel, but uh, focusing on edge computing because uh, the other existing companies all cl focusing on cloud, right? So we are the one have a, a key technology, uh, very possible to bring the, to the edge computing. So we are really have the, the willing actually to, to bring, to create a big company focusing on edge, and not only limited by pneumorphic technology, but try to also bring some other new technology, some other new sensor technology, some other new processing edge computing technology together based on pneumorphic and try to merge everything together to bring the perfect technology to the market. So if you see 10 years, uh, yeah, so maybe the company, hopefully it's going to be another Intel. Yeah.